from our studio and our office at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting, brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corp., the leading provider of credit and credibility solutions for businesses. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Andy Shook, and thanks for joining us. How do you successfully market to the Hispanic customer? Ken Simpson shares eight valuable lessons Clorox learned. You might remember her from our shopper marketing episode, or you may have heard her name attached to the Center for Retailing Excellence. Claudia Mobley joins us today for Retail Her. But first, the headlines. Target has had its share of struggles over the past couple of years, including slow sales, a major data leak, and the subsequent resignation of its longtime CEO. New CEO Brian Cornell announced last week the elimination of the company's troubled Canadian division. According to USA Today, Cornell explained that despite the tireless efforts of Target Canada employees, the 2014 holiday season didn't meet expectations and that Target will shutter all 133 of its Canadian stores. Walmart continues to make inroads into the financial services sector. In a recent press release, Walmart announced Walmart Direct to Cash, a service that allows consumers to pick up their tax refunds at Walmart stores. Walmart is promoting this first-of-its-kind service as a secure alternative to requesting a paper check from the IRS. All eyes remain on the economy as the Labor Department reports that the consumer price index fell by 0.4% in December, the steepest fall since December of 2008. Although Reuters reports that other data indicates a strengthening of, a, of the economy, it adds that the odds of a rate hike in June are fading fast. Here's a great opportunity for small businesses. Sam's Club is partnering with SCORE to provide financial and mentoring support to 102 small businesses across the U.S. They define a small business as a commercial enterprise operated for profit with less than 50 employees. Entrepreneurs who demonstrate a commitment to their business win a $1,000 Sam's Club gift card, an all-expense-paid training event, and SCORE mentoring for a year. Enter online at www.score.org championship and get going because submissions must be received by February 6th. The value of mentoring and what's next for the Center for Retailing Excellence. Here's Claudia Mobley with her story. Hi, welcome to Retail Her. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Claudia Mobley, the founder and director for the Center of Retailing Excellence at the University of Arkansas. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Loria. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. So you founded the Center in 1998. What was lacking in the retail community that the Center addressed? That, and that's a great question, but I have to give you a little history on it. The, the um, Center actually came about because the Walton family gave the University of Arkansas College of Business, $50 million. Mm -hmm. That came with a document about this thick, this is what you do with that money, and it, part of it was hiring high-end good faculty and renovation of building. There's a paragraph about this big that says you have a center for retailing. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of looked around and said, we don't know what that is. Right. So I was very fortunate to be hired to figure out what that was. And so the primary issue that you run into with retailing, and this was 15, 16 years ago, is Really, people think they know retailing mm -hmm. uh, because we shop, uh, because we work there in high school, et cetera. And so their perception of what a retail career is is folding sweaters. Right. And so we have spent a lot of time trying to change that paradigm uh, in people's perception. When I say people, it's not just the students. It's their parents. It's the faculty. It's our industry partners. Mm -hmm. uh, your primary group here is vendor suppliers. Right. And I remember doing a conference with them early on saying, how many people here are in retail? And I had my Walmart and my Lowe's people raise their hand. And the suppliers didn't. Hmm. And that's a disconnect right. because if we don't ultimately sell something to the end consumer, none of us have a job. So that's what we're passionate about is trying to change that perception. And uh, so we came up with the center, uh, I think of a three-legged stool, with the center being the seat, the legs being the faculty, the students, and the industry. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do in the center is how do we connect those three legs of the stool to help create tomorrow's leaders in retail. 
That's amazing. Now, what does the center directly uh, uh, have resources for suppliers? Are there are specific resources for suppliers that the center offers. We're not really a resource for the suppliers. Okay. They're a resource for us. Okay. <laughs> so we use them to help create curriculum. We use them to help uh, our students become better employees to them by mentoring, uh, by coming in and participating in coursework and so forth. But we don't, as a resource, our primary resource is those students are going to hire. Right, exactly. Okay. And speaking of mentoring, I know that's a huge component to what the center offers. Can you share one story of success? You know, everything we do is around mentoring, uh, and so we have student organizations, we have all kinds of things, but we, I had so many stories that I can tell here. Sure. Uh, and here's fun, I just got back from New York, National Retail Federation, I had five students with me who actually earned the privilege to go full paid uh, to New York to attend the NRF conference, and uh, one of those young ladies was offered a job on the spot there. Wow. So you just never know where the opportunities lie, but we've had so many of those kinds of stories, but it took them doing the requirements to earn that trip, which were things like etiquette, dining, and training, mm -hmm. things like networking, uh, things like Excel's training, uh, they would get on into category management and data analysis training, and they had to do those steps to get that. So that's the different kinds of mentoring we do with them. That's a huge success story for mentorship. You go to New York for a conference, you come back with a job. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so I know you don't do this alone. I found a really great, great quote, and it says, the strength of the team is each individual member. The strength of each individual member is the team. Who is the team behind the center? Oh my gosh, our team is phenomenal. I have a small team to start with, it's just uh, uh, three other dynamic women, Not, it wasn't planned, but they're all fabulous, uh, who all have different expertise, uh, and that's the dynamics of a team, we all bring different strengths. And then behind us, we have a board of 70 companies, mm -hmm. which are supplier companies, retail companies, broker companies, people that uh, are passionate about how we can offer opportunities to students that they would get at no other university uh, by virtue of them being involved. So our team is huge. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> that's great. What's next for the center? That's a great question. We're very excited. Uh, immediately, uh, we are in the process of establishing a retail innovations lab, and one of my team is heading that up, and it's just going to add such an incredible piece for the faculty to use, for research, for students to use, for projects. Uh, we're so excited about that, but that is a stepping stone for our bigger goal to become a school of retailing uh, in the Walton College, but we'll be interdisciplinary with the whole university. Okay. So lawyers come to retail, uh, education is in retail, hospitality management's in retail, the sustainability is in retail, entrepreneurship's in retail. So trying to connect all of the dots across campus is our next big vision. Well, that's exciting. It is. So we have our last uh, question here on Retail Her, a signature question. We have a beautiful photo of you, I think, in your <laughs> early 20s. That would have been the only time I was beautiful, but that's thank you. That's not true, Claudia. <laughs> But humility is a great thing. <laughs> Looking at that photo today, what would you tell that young woman about how to navigate this life? Oh, gosh. And, you know, what's fun about that is I came up in the 70s where women's lib, and so there are all kinds of thoughts go through your head. But in reality, it's really about focusing on helping other people be successful, not on the next step. Certainly you need to have a plan for what you want to do, but be prepared for that plan to change. Right. But by helping other folks with you and your team be successful, you will be successful. You will then get the nod to be moved up or move sideways or backwards wherever the, the plan takes you. Right. Be flexible yes. and think about other people around you, not Absolutely. always your your straight line of path. You bet. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Claudia. Thank Great you. conversation. Fun. Don't go anywhere. Saturday morning meeting. We'll be right back. Every day, shoppers are bombarded with traditional brand messages outside the store in hopes that these marketing dollars will drive in-store sales. Closure Media drives retail sales by connecting brands with 95 million Walmart shoppers per year while they are in the store. Through innovative programs at Walmart's photo and money centers, Closure Media converts Walmart shoppers to purchasers of your brand. With reported redemption rates up to seven times the national FSI average, Closure Media drives sales. For more info, visit us at ClosureMedia.com. 
We're here today with Stan Zalowski of Movista to talk about metric-driven workflow. What is that, Stan? Well, what it's about, it's about taking the data that we have, the POS data, uh, inventory data, comp sales, et cetera, and creating a right place, right time environment for uh, reps out in the field. So it's reps out in the field, but it's also for retail as well. Well, it can right. be, for sure, yeah. So th the idea here is pretty simple, and that is that we have to understand in each store, in each location, exactly what we should be selling, versus what we actually are selling and understanding which items are driving our our uh, downside there okay that's take, the data part of it that's correct so okay. you take those data points and you match those up with the rep forces that you have out there or in the case of a retailer the people you have inside your store and what it allows you to do is get much more efficient relative to sort of the um, old way and the current way for a lot of folks of doing things where you treat it like peanut butter and you say hey large store super center go for an hour and a half not twice that. a week you're going to do this you're going to Exactly. Okay. And by the way, continuity is not going to go away. But when you are in that store, it's incredibly powerful to have a short list of items. These are the 12 items that are our problem items. I want you to address these things specifically uh, and get on to the next store. And so what we've seen is we've seen clients that are going from uh, two store visits a day to three, uh, big increases in terms of efficiency out there. And how, how, are, how are they going to do it, though? I mean, how are the reps going to do it? What information are they going to need or, how, you know, what platforms? Well, today, I mean, on our platform, um, you you essentially are going to have that data feed directly to a smart device, right, which most okay. of us uh, have in our pocket now. It's going to provide them the scheduling. Uh, when they go into that particular store, it's going to give them everything they need to get the job done and, and exactly what they need to be worked on, working on. And so smart devices are playing a huge role in this. The data has been there for so a while. The technology is there. Sure. The future is there. How can Movista help? How can people find out more about it? Well, just visit us at uh, www.mvretail.com. And I've actually got a great blog out there right now. We have a great blog out there right now about this subject. And they can call us anytime. We'd love to help. Great. Stans, thanks so much for coming in today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bentonville Commerce. Less than one mile from the Walmart home office. You'll love the convenience, amenities, and customized options Bentonville Commerce offers. For more information, call 479-659-1260 today. We're here today with Ken Simpson of Clorox to discuss eight lessons learned from a Clorox event aimed at reaching the Hispanic market. Walmart has been placing a strong focus on Hispanic shoppers. They have a strategic partnership with Univision Communications, and last year they were named first marketer of the year at AHAA conference. Well, welcome, Ken. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Hey, we're so glad you're here. So what has Clorox been doing to kind of help with this initiative? Well, actually, our insights manager, Sean Engel, came to our laundry team and shared some Hispanic insights with us that indicated to us that this was a good opportunity for us. You know, the kind of insights he, he shared, he said, Hispanics represent about 12% of the U.S. population, but about 20% of the households with children. Well, you know, households with children, oh. there's more dirty laundry. A lot more dirty laundry. We <laughs> like dirty laundry. <laughs> sure. Well, and, and how do you convert a Hispanic shopper from maybe something that they'd grown up with to using your products? And that's, is that kind of what this is about? That's part of it. You know, you, ha you have the Hispanic shoppers that have come from Mexico. Actually, Clorox does sell bleach in sure. Mexico, but we have a very strong competitor there also. Okay. And certainly, if they were using our competitor in Mexico, when they come to the United States, well, we want them to use Clorox bleach. You sure. So you, you went to this conference, um, and you were part of it. You have eight lessons that you learned from it. Uh, the first one... Is this? It says, listen to your shopper insights manager or do research about Hispanic shopper insights. W what does that mean? Yeah, so as I just mentioned, I mean, we got the idea from Sean Engel, our shopper insights manager, but you know, it's, it's just common sense yeah. that you need to do your homework. You need to do your homework. And he, he helped us understand are we Clorox winning with the Walmart Hispanic shopper? Is Walmart winning? with the Hispanic shopper. Where is the opportunity? What's different about the laundry Hispanic shopper than the average shopper that, that we deal with? He helped us with all those things, so he helped us to develop the plan. He also, by the way, went with us to Walmart 
and talked to the Walmart and shared these people, insights with them and the buyer okay. and shared the insights. We got their insights, which helped us to develop the plan. Wow, amazing! So, second thing is to start with a test of stores to learn. Okay, so what does that mean? How many stores do you start with? One, two, ten? Yeah, that's good learning because Walmart has over six hundred stores that are traded Hispanic. And so, you know, okay. one, one way to think about it is, oh, let's, let's just do it with all the Hispanic stores. Well, I think we were smart to pick out 300 stores in Texas, which we figured out through the insights, though that was an opportunity area for them and for us. But I think it's better to, with anything that, that's, a, because it's the first time we'd ever done anything like this, and when to you start out smaller and learn. Right. And, and so when you say you're, you're going after that Hispanic market, what, what's the communication to them? What's different about what you did with them during this test versus what you do every day? Was it Hispanic uh, market packaging changes or what exactly was it? Well, the elements that we uh, chose to use is first of all, we had a customized display okay. that had both English and Spanish. And it also, the whole uh, Hispanic event, which took place in October of this year, by the way, oh, okay. but the whole, the whole Hispanic event tied in with a Hispanic TV personality uh, that was both on the merchandising materials, on the radio that we okay. used, and then we also did parking lot events where this Hispanic television personality showed up oh, at the Walmart okay. store in the front of the store, like there was a tent mm -hmm. area, and uh, signed autographs and gave tips about doing laundry. And of course, buy your laundry products at Walmart Right. and use Clorox laundry products were okay. part of the message. So this was a, these, these were big events. Uh, the, the parking lot events lasted a couple of hours, like yeah. two or three hours yeah. uh, at, at the individual stores. Right. And the rest of it was shipping in the customized pallet to the stores that were traded Hispanic. And Part of the whole thing, we use radio advertising to create awareness. Right, right. Uh, that was that was part of it, and we also used a radio station that came in that was part of the uh, parking lot event, okay. and so they were broadcasting the whole time. Oh, come to Walmart. Uh, we have uh, we have a TV celebrity here. Right, there's some right. there's some prizes being given away, some things being given away. You know, not too much value. You have to yeah. follow the Walmart <laughs> uh, right. guidelines on that. Well, number three says team with Walmart marketing and with your buyer to determine the objectives. So were those established um, up front? What are we going to try to do? Yes, and you know that only makes good common business sense. Right. That you, how, how, how do you know uh, where you're going if you don't have a goal, uh, first of all, to help point you in the right direction? And so we established goals, both internal goals and also goals with Walmart, which helped us to determine what's the plan. But it also helps because now that when the event's over, everybody right. says, well, was it successful? Well, if you haven't established the criteria ahead of time, exactly right. then you have this debate about what were you really trying to accomplish? <laughs> well, before you tell us whether it was successful or not successful, we need to take a break. We'll be right back. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area. Call 479-659-1260 today. I think our, our MBA is different in several aspects from the traditional online MBA programs. We're teaching a methodology that has proven to win. In our school, learn something on Monday and on Tuesday morning, put it in practice. It's real stuff with real action to accelerate careers. And we're back with Ken Simpson of Clorox. Uh, Ken was just sharing eight lessons um, that he's learned from a recent Clorox event targeting the Hispanic market. All right, we left everybody on a cliffhanger, Ken. Yes. Um, and number four, I think, really gets us there. Number four is establish success criteria, goals internally and with Walmart up front. Now, you're saying that you did that with them and that you were just going to tell us, was it successful? 
Well, the, the good news is that we can look at the POS data. Okay. Yeah. The POS data would indicate that it was successful. In general, our sales were up more than in okay. the control area. I mean, we were happy with it. It wasn't like, wow. I will say that the parking lot events, the sales were up over 40%. We don't have the share data back yet because that was one of the key criteria for determining whether it was successful or not, and we don't have that data yet. So that's still to be okay. determined. To be determined, great. Number five says there isn't a need for a customized display palette. Okay, now you put together a really nice palette, look beautiful, right? And, yeah. and, and as, I, I know as a supplier, I've done that. I've put together these wonderful palettes. What happened? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, actually, what we saw going into the stores is that a lot of the stores just took the pallet and took the cases off of the pallet. No. And put, I can imagine that, <laughs> uh, and just put them up, you know, on an end cap, yeah. which is good, or yeah. on a pallet display. Yep. And they didn't really u utilize uh, the pallet or the marketing materials that were with the pallet. It, and our, our take on it in the end was it's not worth the return. It doesn't give us a good return on investment. But, in, but I think you learned something from that. You know, as big CPG p suppliers that spend a lot of money marketing and putting these different things together, sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it's not. Sometimes there's a return on yeah. investment. Um, sometimes there isn't. And, but that's just part of doing business with Walmart, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I think that's the that's the reality. I know for me, I spend a lot of time in the stores in this ha in this particular Texas yeah. event. Yes, <laughs> in the back rooms at night with the stalkers, and you know, I realize like you know what, getting things executed here, it's it's not going to be a perfect world. You know, I grew up in the stores um, through DSD um, with with the pizza companies, and I, you learn that same thing. You find out that kind of what happens at the corporate level and how you want things to happen, and then what actually happens out there sometimes aren't quite the same thing. Yeah, but but, but you you have to have realistic expectation, I think. And your team does as well, and the buyers and the market, everyone, right? Yes. Yeah. And you have to do a good job with uh, Walmart operations. And, and you know, I, f I found that working with the Walmart operations people in Texas, mm -hmm. the market manager, the yep. marketing manager, they came to the events too, by the way. I mean, they sh physically showed up. And these events were on Saturday too, by the way. Oh, wow. But they physically showed up. They participated. They were very supportive. We got, we, got, we got good support from that's, Walmart operations. That's great. Number six, it is difficult to estimate and control the execution of the Hispanic pallets in the store. I think we, we kind of covered that one, right? Um, what about his, number seven? His seven is Hispanic shoppers responded positively to involving a Hispanic personality. Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, Maggie Hermanes is her name. But uh, my take on it was that people did respond very positively. And they knew who she was. They knew who she was. They'd seen her on TV. She gives tips on TV also. Okay. And so she was giving tips about laundry. Uh, they used her name uh, in the radio advertising to say, oh, she's in the Walmart store. And we used it on all the merchandising materials too. And our take on that was that uh, Hispanic shoppers responded very positively to that. So just putting a general picture of a Hispanic person is is not as effective as actually having a, someone who people know. In this case, it seemed to work yeah. very well. She did a great job also with the oh, shoppers. That's, that's she was she was very good with uh, with the Walmart shoppers. Number eight, give Hispanic events a try. <laughs> yeah, give them a try. <laughs> well, our our experience would indicate that this was successful. We learned a lot of things. I think one of the reasons to do it, though, too, not yeah. the only reason, is that Walmart also responded very positively to this. Our buyer, Norm Nelson, uh, he was very uh, he was very supportive. In fact, he also came down to Houston, uh, went to the market, saw the stores, uh, went to the parking lot event on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he was he was really supportive. And then our marketing people, both Alex Nates and Diana uh, Das. They also were very supportive of putting together the plan, executing it, and helping us. So we got a really positive collaboration okay. from the Walmart people here in, in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. And that's also worth, you know, it's good. In the beginning, we talked a little bit about um, um, them being a part of the marketer, first marketer of the year at the AHA conference, right? So they're trying to find inroads into the Hispanic communities and ways to communicate to them. Mm -hmm. Because Walmart has some great products. And their stores really, you know, their high Hispanic stores are designed. They have products in there uh, for the Hispanic market and as well as we're finding other CPG companies are trying to develop programs as well. Yeah, and then the other thing you know you got to always keep in mind is they've got a tough competitor in Texas with HEB yeah. 
H-E-B is very good, very good with the Hispanic shopper. And so you know, Walmart has challenge there. Yeah. And if we as suppliers can help them to be more successful with those Hispanic shoppers, it's good for Walmart and it's good for our brands too. It is, it is, it's very good. Well, Ken, it's always a joy to have you on this show. Uh, we really enjoy your insights. Um, and these eight tips uh, for learning about the Hispanic community, very, very helpful, very Thanks. helpful. Thanks, Andy. Saturday morning meeting will continue shortly. Retail Solutions is the market leader helping advance reporting and analytics with Walmart suppliers around the globe. We manage the data for you, automate data integration, attribution, and reports, and then help you focus on activities that will drive the most value. To do this, RSI works with you to perform a business value assessment to identify the largest value opportunities in your business. If improving results in sales through better insights and execution and efficiencies are important to you, contact RSI today. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. Our thanks to all of today's guests. In upcoming weeks, we'll speak with Ron Tarks, former senior VP and president of Walmart Germany, about when it's time to take your product international. For our February special, Social Marketing, you'll learn the tips, tools, and strategies to help make this year's social marketing plan your best yet. As always, we appreciate your taking the time to join us. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. I'm Andy Shook, and from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting, thanks for watching. I walk in every day and I just take a deep breath and I'm like, I can't believe where it's gone, where it's come to. Blood, sweat, and tears, and then some, everything to build the, the company where it's at. I'm Billy Westbrook, and Scrublade is a idea I had. I wondered why don't wiper blades scrub your windshield? If they're going back and forth, why don't they scrub the windshield while they're doing it? You know, I was making barely any money to survive. Um, I was living on an air mattress at a friend's house, completely stripped down to nothing. It's just me. I was like, I'm going to give this 100% and see what happens with it. And that was in 2006. It's 2014 now, and I've never stopped. In the journey of Scrublade, we had a huge opportunity to do a, a big test with, with Walmart. And if I would've worked all those eight years and neglected my business credit, I wouldn't have had the biggest opportunity of our journey. Dunn and Bradstreet Credibility is a huge partnership for Scrublane. They share the knowledge really well, go through your credit rating with you and explain what this means and what that means. We're um, starting a big test with AutoZone, and I mean, they're the largest automotive retailer in the world. It's gonna take our company to the next level and beyond. What drives me, what keeps me going, is uh, my family. Yeah. My job is to take care of my family and it gives me a lot of pride to know that I can do that. And at the same instance, Dun & Bradstreet Credibility is uh, taking care of me or my entity, Scrublade. I mean, it's still a small company, but big in my eyes. We wanna have fun with it. We wanna bring people in along for the journey. You know, life's a journey, get a clearer view. That's what Scrublade's uh, tagline is, and it, it, it means everything. <laughs>